Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I just want to go over some of the new components that I just purchased uh, for my new PC build. So, in total, these components, including the Windows operating system and uh, a monitor, come to be about a little bit over two thousand dollars. And the primary reason that I'm building this PC is because I want to be able to game and produce video at exponential speeds and high frames per second. So with the gaming, my, my primary goal, I, I'm not trying to do 4K gaming, okay? I don't really care about that right now. What I do wanna do is 1080p gaming for any game at ultra settings and every game I, wa I wanna play at 60 frames per second or more. And that's gonna be very possible, actually it's almost guaranteed with this setup. Of course, you have everything over here that you need to build a PC, you have a case, uh, you've got a motherboard, which is a centerpiece. You know, you've got the power supply to give power to all these components. You've got a graphics card. You've got a, a solid state hard drive for super fast read and write speeds. You have an i7 processor, Intel processor. You have a cooling for the processor. This is this is a classic over here. Um, it gets the job done. Your your CPU will not overheat if you use this thing. And of course, you have the RAM. Okay, so we have everything we need to build a PC. The motherboard, the power supply, the graphics card, the processor, hard drive. We have some fans for the case. Uh, we've got the CPU cooler and we have some RAM over here. Now let's take a look at this uh, case really quick. So this is a mid tower ATX case. And the reason it is an ATX case obviously is because I have an ATX motherboard. If you buy an ATX motherboard, you have to make sure you buy a case uh, that will take that ATX sized motherboard and it's going to be a precise fit. Okay, so these are the things you're just going to think about when you're building a new PC. All right, so we have an ATX motherboard and we have a mid tower ATX uh, PC tower. And this uh, PC tower actually has a lot of airflow. It actually takes a total of seven fans. All fans have to be 120 millimeters, uh, no more. So basically, you can put three fans at the bottom over here. You can put one fan over here and you can put three fans on the top over here and the air comes out from this side. So what you want to do is you want to put three uh, fans over here and you want to make sure that's intake so air comes in and then this can be an exhaust over here the air goes out and you can have three fans over here and they can also be exhaust and they'll send the air out as well. So you have to make sure you have proper airflow uh, so your PC remains cool inside. And like I said, you can only have 120 millimeter fans. And of course I purchased five fans. This is a group of two fans in each box, two, two, one. So we have five fans. In the beginning, I'll put two at the bottom, two on the top and one in the back. And that's gonna give me enough air uh, flow to keep this CPU very, uh, this uh, computer very cool. And of course the centerpiece of all PCs is the motherboard. Okay, so you take this motherboard you, you attach it here using screws in the, into the middle section over here. And then all these other components get attached to the motherboard and that's how you build a custom PC. Okay, the motherboard is the centerpiece. Now this is a Maximus 8 Ranger motherboard. It's almost $200 over here. And uh, one thing, the reason, one of the reasons I bought this one is because it has an M2 socket. What the M2 socket allows me to do is take this solid state hard drive over here, which is also an M2 type, and plug it directly onto the motherboard. So normally what you would do is you would buy a 2.5 inch uh, hard drive, a solid state hard drive, and then you would uh, take a cable from that hard drive and then you would attach that cable onto, onto a SATA interface on the actual motherboard. But when you have an M2 socket on the motherboard, you can buy an M2 um, type solid state hard drive and you can attach this right onto the motherboard into the M2 socket. And of course the benefit of being able to plug this, that solid state drive into the M2 socket is twofold. One, you're gonna get super high speeds. You're gonna get four times, almost four times, theoretically speaking, uh, of SATA. And the number two thing is you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be using cables. So with, uh, with SATA, if this was a 2.5 inch SATA solid state hard drive, you would have a cable running from this guy into this guy. So that's just one more cable to manage. But because this is an M2 style, you take this guy, like I said, and you just plug it right onto the motherboard. No cables required, and you get super high 
read and write speeds almost up to four times as much as SATA. Okay, so that's a hard drive. And of course, uh, every computer needs RAM. So we have two sticks over here. Is it two sticks? Yep, it's two sticks, uh, eight each. So total we got 16 gigabytes, which is enough these days for just about anything. And uh, of course we have an Intel i7 6700K processor. It's an unlocked processor. So if I want to uh, overclock, I can overclock it. But regardless, it's a very fast sixth generation Intel i7 processor. And then of course, the processors, when you buy them, come with their own little fan. But those fans are seldom good enough to keep that thing cooled, especially if I'm gonna be gaming. That's why I purchased this thing. Like I said, this is a classic. It's Hyper 212 Evo. You take this thing. Well, well, first you take the processor and you put the processor on the motherboard. And then you take this thing and you put this on top of the processor and this cools your processor. And this keeps your processor super cool. First we have the graphics card. Now this is the most expensive bit of all the setup. So if I zoom in over here, this thing is $750. Well, I got it on sale at $650 now, but this is what's gonna allow me to play games at ultra settings at 1080p. I can even do 4K gaming, but I'm not gonna be able to get uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, my primary aim with this card is video production and gaming at 1080p at ultra settings over 60 frames per second. I want to be able to play super smooth and I'm talking about latest games and the greatest games within the past couple of years. You know, games such as Crisis 3, uh, Witcher, uh, Witcher 3, I mean, and also games like Grand Theft Auto 5. So just to be clear, with this card over here, I'm going to be able to play all those games at 1080p at ultra settings uh, over 60 frames per second, no problem. Now I can play those games at 4K as well, but I'm not gonna be getting 60 frames per second, but it's still gonna be playable, but it's not gonna be 60 FPS, which is something we gamers want to have. So again, this is one of the fastest cards on the market. I was gonna get the GTX 1070, but I said, let's just get this one for now. So, uh, and the final thing I wanna talk about over here is we talked about everything else, the CPU, the hard drive, the motherboard a little bit. Uh, we're not doing a review on these products, I'm just giving you an overview of the components. Uh, this over here is a power supply, it's 750 watts, and uh, it's a modular power supply. So I always recommend people buy a modular power supply because you only need to use uh, cables on a need-only basis. So let's say I take this card and I attach to the motherboard, and then uh, normally, if you buy a, a, a power supply, you have all these cables just on the side and then you have to put those cables in the case and try to manage them somehow. They look really ugly. But when you have a modular uh, power supply, all you do is you can plug in a cable. So I can plug in one cable here and then I can take that cable and I can plug that into the, uh, uh, the graphics card. Then I can plug another cable over here and I can take that and I can uh, plug that into my CPU. And of course, all this CPU and all this graphics cards are gonna be on the motherboard. But as you can see, I only need to use cables when I actually need them. So that's gonna make cable management inside this case very, very nice. So the case is gonna look clean, it's gonna look smooth. You're not gonna have all these cables just hanging around loose, making the case look ugly. That's especially true because this is a see-through case. So I want to be able to see my setup through the case. You know, these fans over here, uh, they're going to light up. This is going to be red, red, red. So I'm going to see red light over here, red over here, red over here, here, and even here. And I want to be able to see the inside of my PC, but I don't want it to look like a mess. So with a modular power supply, uh, cable management becomes really, really easy and everything looks nice and neat. So that's basically it. That's, uh, I'm going to actually uh, show you guys after I build a PC to see how it looks, give you a couple benchmarks if you're interested in gaming. But um, basically uh, this total setup here is including a monitor, it's approximately $2,000. It's a little over $2,000, but I'm just going to say uh, approximately $2,000 uh, to build a PC that will play all the latest games at 1080p at ultra settings and also you'll be able to do 4K gaming at 30 or more frames per second, but I don't think you're gonna be able to do 60 frames per second just now because 4K is in fact very hard to accomplish unless you buy multiple graphics cards and do an SLI uh, configuration.
It was approximately a hundred dollars. We got 90 bucks on this thing right here, the RAMs, that's uh, 16 gigabytes. This guy over here is approximately, I don't know what this is, let's take that off. This thing is approximately 30 bucks. Uh, you can find this on Amazon. I will drop links below to everything on Amazon. You can go check them out. This guy over here, that's uh, $209, 750. I got it for 650. Uh, the i7 processor is $300, that's $200, 512 megabytes. Uh, gigabytes of uh, solid state drive M2 type so it plugs in the M2 socket and this is uh, $13 25 25 so you get five fans 120 millimeters uh, for approximately $65 and the case is a hundred dollars and uh, we have a monitor in the other room that I, I purchased just for this PC but I may end up attaching this PC to my regular three monitor setup that I have in the office but yeah that's two thousand dollars in total uh, to build a computer of this caliber. Let's do a quick close up of all these products over here. So that's the modular power supply, 750 watts. Uh, over here we've got the, uh, the memory sticks, the RAM. It's a DDR4, it's 16 gigabytes. And then we have the CPU cooler, which is gonna cool that uh, CPU right over there, the processor. And then we have the Maximus 8 Ranger motherboard, and uh, which is uh, $200. And then we have some fans. These are 120 millimeter fans and there are five total. So there's two in this box, two in this box, and one in this box. And then over here, we've got the, uh, the best thing uh, that, I, that I purchased today, the uh, graphics card. That's the GeForce GTX 1080 graphics card. And then we have 512 gigabytes solid state hard drive by Intel. And then we have the Intel i7 uh, processor, it's 6700K. This is the sixth generation processor. And if you look at the bottom here, the, the socket type is LGA1151. You always have to look at the socket type of the processor because that socket type has to match the socket type on the motherboard. So this motherboard, when I was purchasing the motherboard, I made sure that the socket on this motherboard in the center is LGA1151. So this processor can fit that uh, perfectly. And of course, finally, we have the case over here. As you can see, um, you know, the power supply goes here, but you can still have air uh, exhaust fans blowing air out through the power supply. So that's not a big deal. And of course, uh, there's some uh, openings back here. So that's gonna allow the air to go up. So let's, let me just open this really quick and look inside right over here. It goes comes right down. So like I said, three fans will go over here. They'll do an intake and one fan will go over here. It's going to do exhaust. It's going to go out. And then we have one, two, three fans over here. And that's going to blow the air out. And it's going to go out from those little openings that you see in the back. And also some air is going to come out from, uh, from this location. And uh, that's basically uh, everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Like I said, I'm gonna do a, one, once I build a PC, I'm gonna make a video, I'm gonna showcase it to you guys, give you some benchmarks. And of course, meanwhile, make sure you subscribe to Saki Tech and give this video a thumbs up. Now you have a fantastic day and I'll see you the next time.